It started with the Yolo Box. We then got the Yolo Box Pro, and now we have the Yolo Box Mini. Let's get into it. Welcome to the channel, folks. My name's Shane. Just to let you know, this is a product provided review. Yolo Live has sent this out for this particular review, so a massive thank you to them for allowing me to review this item. I've also spent a lot of time reviewing the Yolo Box and Yolo Box Pro, and I've given them lots of feedback over the last few years, and they're continually improving their products with every single release. How this fits into their lineup is slightly different. I'm gonna talk about what it has in common with the Yolo Box and Yolo Box Pro, and a few of the trade-offs that come with a far more compact and small design. I'm also gonna to touch on a few of the little firmware bugs that I've encountered. They're nothing serious, this performs really well, but there's a few things that you need to know about it, and I'll timestamp everything down in the description below. Let's talk about size and price. So the Yolo Box Mini is far smaller than the original Yolo Box and Yolo Box Pro, and it comes in at $699 which is more affordable than the other two options. While you only get one HDMI input source, this will be enough for most people who just want a single camera setup. The Yolo Box Mini, much like the other two units from Yolo Live, allow you to stream directly to multiple services at the same time without any paid subscriptions or additional fees. This is awesome. It really opens up a computerless opportunity to just put this in your pocket take it to an event and live stream from a single camera source. I love this new 5.5 inch touchscreen. Not only is it really easy to see from every viewing angle, it's bright enough that you can see it outdoors coming in at 500 nits brightness. Not only is this a really functional live streaming solution, but we can also record internally or use this as a field monitor. So if we're outside and we wanna not use a flippy screen on a camera, or maybe your flippy screen doesn't actually turn all the way around, you can mount this directly on top of your camera and monitor it that way. I think the major advantage to the Yolo Box Mini is it's 500 nits brightness, but also the fact it's small enough to put into your pocket. If you're gonna be taking your camera bag with you, this won't weigh it down whatsoever. While this might seem smaller and less powerful than the other two options, it still gives you all of the powerful features that you've found in the Yolo Box Pro. It gives you the ability to stream out over Wi-Fi via ethernet. You can also insert a 4G SIM card. You can connect this to a hotspot from your phone and stream directly to the web. And you also have all of that extended functionality being able to record and also being able to use this as a field monitor. Additionally, I can see this being really effective for folks who already own a four channel HDMI switcher that doesn't already encode. Or if you don't have the ability to stream directly over Wi-Fi with your current switcher, you can hook the output of your current switcher into the Yolo Box Mini, and then you can stream that way. So it really complements another piece of hardware. Furthermore, the compact nature of this unit really opens itself up to being used in a more handheld environment. So you can get into IRL streaming with this, just mount it on top of your camera and you'll be in business. It also comes with the attachment for the Yolo Box to mount directly into the hot shoe mount on your camera. This will also work great in situations where you might be filming a wedding, a church event, or even a band in a live sense. So if you're at a festival and you wanna live stream it, boom, put this on top of your camera and you're good to go. Let's cover all of the inputs and outputs, starting with the HDMI input over here. So this will accept a signal up to 1080p at 60 frames per second. We get a USB 3.0 port. We get a HDMI out, which is being recorded via a separate recorder. We get an ethernet port on the back and if you're streaming from home, always use that. It's the most reliable bar none. We get a line input, a microphone input, and we also get a headphones out. On the underside of the yellow box, we get our SD card slot, SIM card slot over here, a quarter 20 screw point if you wanna attach it to a tripod, and our power button on the bottom over here. To keep things cool, on the back of the unit, we have an exhaust fan. Now, I'm laying this flat on the desk because not only is it easy for me to film, but it's just an easy way to keep it out of the primary shot. I would recommend probably not laying it flat, especially if you've got a neoprene cover or some sort of material on your desk, I would have it up at an angle. So you can just pop something under it to keep it up like this, or get a Manfrotto Pixie tripod, which is the way that I'd use it if I was doing a dedicated setup. I'll link to one of those below. Loaded into the Yellow Box Mini is the Qualcomm 660 processor, which is the same one found in the Yolo Box Pro. The Yolo Box Mini has the same processor as the big Yolo Box Pro, so the quality will be indistinguishable. Let's talk about what's missing from the Yolo Box Mini in comparison to the other two units. The first being additional HDMI ports. So if you need more than one HDMI in, 
then go for a separate unit. Again, if you already have your own switching system set up that doesn't have an encoder built in, then you can of course use that switcher going directly into the Yellow Box Mini. The last thing missing from the Yellow Box Mini is a USB output which allowed the Yellow Box Pro to be detected as a webcam if you chose to run it into a computer. Yellow Live provide their own multi live streaming platform built directly into the unit. Once you have a stream set up, all you need to do is hit on their platforms option, which is the second icon across, and then you can connect your YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, or even stream to a custom RT, RT MPS. Up next, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to set up a live stream. Once you have your YOLO Live account set up, you'll be presented with this screen right here. Tap on the plus down the bottom here to set up a live stream or go into monitor mode. We'll take a look at monitor mode in just a moment. Let's tap on create a live stream. I'm just gonna call this test and I have to tell you, touch typing on here feels great. It's every bit as good as a good quality phone and it's lagless, which is also great. You can set, schedule a time and date, but I'm just gonna go and hit create here. And then you can see that we've got our test live stream right here. So if we tap on that, it brings up this screen right here. Now I'm recording the output. You can see the big go live button, but there's also some other functionality built into this, which is awesome. So on the top right, you can see it says 1080p over here. You can tap on that and change it to 720 or 480. It's up to you which one you want to stream at. If you've got lower bandwidth, choose 720. 1080p will obviously look the best. If you want to live stream and record at the same time, you can do that without any problems. This unit can handle it. Just pop in an SD card and you'll be good to go. Now in the top corner over here, there's a camera icon. I hope they change that to a white circle that says REC. And after you start recording, it should light up red. That would be ideal. But if you just tap on that, you can start recording and there's a little timer on screen to let you know how long it's been recording for. If you're ready to go live at any particular point, all you have to do is tap on the go live button and then you'll be streaming. It's that easy. It's pretty cool. But if you want to customize this unit a little further in terms of its bit rate and so forth, you can adjust those parameters in the settings. So if we tap on the cog wheel over here, it gives us a whole lot of different options on screen, one of which is encoding settings. Now, CBR is constant bit rate, and this is the most recommended way of streaming. Now, you also get an FPS value, which you can modify. Just know some platforms only accept NTSC platforms, so it'll be 30 or 60 frames per second. If you're in a PAL region like I am, and you're only recording, I would set this to 25 or 50 frames per second, but anytime I'm live streaming out of this unit, I want it set at 30 because that's the native streaming rate for YouTube, for example, but it's up to you how you want to adjust this. You can adjust the FPS just by tapping on the screen here and adjusting it one way or the other. It's really cool. It supports far more than it did when the first YOLO box was first released. Now, if we take a look at the bit rate, we can crank this up if we need more quality and if our network can handle it, or we can bring this down depending on our particular needs based on our network performance. Most platforms work best with constant bitrate, but if you wanna change it to variable bitrate or CQ, you can do that as well just by touching on those options, but leave it to CBR and see how you go. When it comes to the recording limits option on screen here, this allows us to continually back up our stream or recording every 10, 20, 30, 60 minutes, or you can leave it set to continuously, which they don't recommend because 10 minutes will continually back it up to your SD card, whereas if it's split to say 30 minute increments and then the battery goes, you may lose that second portion. So just keep that in mind, leave it to 10 minutes, you should be in business. We also get a program out and program out is what your audience will see. With it off, you're seeing all of the menu items that you've seen so far. With it on, you're getting a very accurate, clean HDMI feed. Looking at what I see on my reference monitor over here, looks indistinguishable almost from what it would be if the unit wasn't in the chain. The contrast might be slightly different, but I'm really impressed with the way it sends the signal out. So yeah, great image quality. Yellow Box Mini also allows you to monitor the chat in real time just by tapping on the chat icon second from the bottom right over here. And it will show all of the live stream questions and comments come up on the side of the unit. This is great. This saves you having to have a secondary laptop or computer with you just to monitor the live stream. Say you're at a sporting event and you wanna get a scoreboard up, you can generate team names, you can also call it whatever event you want instead of game name. You can change all of these parameters. It's nice and simple. All you need to do is tap 
on the scoreboard icon, which is the third from the end. This allows you to get into the settings here. We can change the score by tapping on these plus or minus options over here, which is really powerful. Now I'm in preview mode, so your audience won't see any of this. Just remember that you'll get a clean send that will look like I just showed you before without any of the additional icons on screen. We can then change the time, the period to either quarters or halves here, which is great depending on what you wanna call it. We can also go down to scoreboard styling and change the font, the text color, the team names, and every other parameter in this option. Up next, I'm gonna show you some of the titles and lower thirds that you can create using the yellow box mini. So if you tap on the stack of books icon over here, it brings up a plus icon, we can tap on that, and we can go into lower thirds. I'm just gonna choose this one at the bottom here, this is my favorite. And this really allows you to customize it to no end. Not only can we just move it around on screen by dragging it with our finger, we can change the text nice and simply. It brings up the keyboard. I'll just type my name here. I should, maybe I should have made it subscribe. If you're not subscribed, please do so. I put a lot of work into these videos and it seems I can't talk and type at the same time. We can change the text size over here by using this slider and the scale, which kind of looks like the same thing. All right. so. I'm gonna leave that there. We can change the background color, make it black because it'll look better in this room. That's always a cool thing. We can change the text alignment and do all these other things, change the font and so forth, but I'm just gonna go done. Now the cool thing about this is it won't show up unless I tap on the preview of it over here. We'll tap on it and now it's on screen. So this is really powerful. You can queue up a few of these and turn them on and off as you so choose. From the same menu, we now have image overlays. So this is gonna pull a file from the SD card this one is, I think, the yellow box logo, so we'll just use that. It's already on the card by default. It allows us to not only scale this, but we can reposition it anywhere we want on screen. So if you want the branding, or if you want your particular branding, you can put a image on the SD card and pull it into your stream. And again, to get this on screen, all I have to do is tap on that one and boom. It's kind of hidden behind all the other stuff that you're looking at, but you get the point. So it's very easy just to turn these on and off leave them both on at the same time, or leave them both off at the same time, and they seem to dissolve nicely as well. And lastly, let's take a look at the countdown timer. If we tap on that, we get two that we can choose from, starting soon in 10 minutes, or be right back. So let's go starting soon, and this is where we can change the amount of duration on the timer. So if you only want it to be five minutes, which would be better than waiting 10 minutes for a live stream, you can do that. But countdown timers are really invaluable when it comes to live streaming. What you're looking at right now is the program out. So I've queued up all the things that we've just created so you can see them in all their glory. So this is the timer. There it goes, it's, it's doing its countdown. That's pretty cool. Turn it off by tapping on it, nice and simple. Here's the image overlay that we've created over here and the lower third with my name. And lastly, if you wanna change the brightness of the screen on the unit on the fly, which won't affect anything going out to your audience, you can simply swipe down from the top, a bar will appear and you can move this left or right depending on how bright your room is. Let's check out the audio capabilities when it comes to the Yellow Box Mini. Now, all of this section, the audio and most of the video you'll see that's being recorded via the SD card on the unit itself. So no tricks here, this is just how it sounds. So this is my shirt microphone to begin with. Anytime you see an overlay, I'm recording the output so you can see what I'm doing. So we get a few different options on screen here to control the level of each of the inputs. Now we also get a microphone input, which I've assigned to this Taxstar shotgun microphone. It's a bit tricky to say. Let's go over to that now. So this is this microphone. Hopefully it sounds good, nice and clear. This won't sound as loud as this microphone, it just doesn't have as much gain. I can't push it any further. So just keep that in mind if you are using a shotgun microphone that plugs in like this, sometimes it's not the loudest. And now we're gonna do a test using the Rode Procaster going into my Rodecaster Pro out of an output into the 3.5 millimeter line in on the Yolo Box Mini. So I'm gonna switch over to that now. So this is how that sounds. Now the great news is anytime you're using external audio, it's going to be in sync. So if you want great quality audio and you're using a professional microphone, you can run this in without having any issues with synchronization. It's so close that I can't notice this in editing and I've shot this section twice. And the reason I shot this section twice because the first time I recorded all of this, the audio was just a little bit too hot, even though it looked fine on the audio monitoring section of the Yellow Box Mini, it was still clipping for whatever reason. So just make sure anytime you're doing this, you listen to it first up with headphones to make sure nothing is distorted. 
move the sliders around accordingly to make sure you've got enough gain, but so it's not clipping. After listening back to the audio, I wasn't overly impressed with the end result, which is a little bit of a shame. It sounded okay sometimes, and then other times it was clicking, and other times it was just not loud enough, especially with that shotgun microphone going into the microphone input. Food for thought there, that hopefully they address this sooner than later, because as it stands right now, I probably wouldn't use this based on its audio quality if I was streaming on my own YouTube channel. I wanted to cover a couple of the frequently asked questions that I see come up when it comes to Yellow Box products. So can you record and play back a file at the same time? No, this doesn't have the ability to play back a file. If you're wondering whether or not you can mix audio signals from say the HDMI input and then an external audio source or both external audio sources, you can't do that with this unit. It's a single audio source operation only. Thirdly, you might be wondering how loud this unit is. The fan is very quiet. I don't think it'll ever be a problem unless you've got a shotgun microphone maybe pointing directly down. But this will most likely be sort of off to the side if you are doing a live stream. And in this particular orientation, I can hear the fan, but only just. Let's talk about overheating. So this unit hasn't had any problems here in the studio. I haven't shot with it in direct sunlight on a bright, hot or sunny day or anything like that. So I can't speak for outdoor use, but indoors, at least today, I've been using it for four hours straight cutting this video and it's had no problems whatsoever. So at least indoors in a studio situation, you shouldn't have any issues. Thanks for watching folks. My name's Shane. I'm gonna wrap this video up by talking about the pros and cons of this unit and also some of the bugs. We'll start with the bugs because these will no doubt be addressed. The first bug is you take this out of the box, you set it to English and some of the menu items are in Chinese. You know, not the end of the world, but it makes it really hard for a guy like myself to work or navigate the menu when it's in a different language. That will no doubt be addressed. It might just be a little bit of an oversight. Secondly, the audio quality really needs to be addressed. Sometimes it's okay, other times it isn't. Those clicks and pops that you heard just aren't good enough for me personally to be using it on my own YouTube channel or for recording. I wouldn't trust it as it is right now. But that said, all the other functionality works well and that was a known bug on the older version. So I'm hoping that that gets addressed and fixed in a future firmware upgrade. A massive thank you again to YOLO Live for sending this out for the review. I really appreciate it. If you wanna check it out, links will be below. Thanks again, catch you soon. See ya.